Welcome to the Non-Essential Podcast. I'm Steve Gibson. I'm Ben Matlock. And I just noticed a dead spider on the wall that I don't think was there a day or two ago, so it just it just came by to, to die. And now, I, and now I'm noticing five of its spider friends coming out to mourn it. I, not yet, but that's what I'm... I'm going to be very distracted for the rest of the show. <clears throat> yeah. Be like, hey, I didn't think there were spiders in this house. I want my money back. God, spiders are the worst. Like, yeah, like, are. like seeing like videos of like those like mother spiders c- just covered in baby spiders, <laughs> and it's like, and that's that is the birthing process. Like, as traumatic and like you know painful as like human birth is, like compared to a spider, where it's like you gotta fucking have hundreds of those things, and then they're gonna crawl on you and fucking eat you and shit. <laughs> Yeah, I've, and that's and you know name. it's tragic, but it's also what those spiders deserve for making more spiders. Right. Um, I had a friend in school. I he's still a friend, so I still have him. But like way back when he lived, you know, we were all living with our parents still because we were in school. Um, Except the he cool at one kids. point like moved his ba- his bedroom to their basement because he wanted his own. You know, they had sh- like a lot of kids. He had shared a room with his brother, and you get to a certain age, you don't want to do that anymore. And um, no thanks. I'd rather a, hang with spiders, spiders than my annoying That's, brother. Yeah, his his dad built like an enclosure underneath the the stairs. They had a, an interesting basement that I could spend probably the whole episode describing. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> the one staircase there was like room underneath it, and he turned it into a bedroom. It's like, well, that's cool. But uh, that sounds like a. Uh, that fucking cupboard they made Harry Potter live in. Pretty much, yeah. Except for he volunteered for it. He's like, please. That's put how me fucking. In a cupboard. That's how stupid we are. Like Harry Potter was being tortured, and we're like reading the books and watching the movies and being like, "That's so cool." He's got his own little clubhouse <laughs> that they throw him into well, that's, with a that's bowl the of gruel. If, if Harry had had to share a room with his, I don't remember cousin or whoever the fuck that other kid was. I'd, if they had shared a room, Harry would have been begging to be like thrown in the closet under the stairs but because they forced him to do that instead he thought whatever they were doing that just to protect harry like like you don't want to live with this other kid like as bad as he is to you now if you share a room with him he will devour you in your sleep he's a little monster but anyway so he was living down in the basements and same what you were just talking about like when one day he was sitting there and his big spider crawled up on the wall and he is like oh shit i'm not gonna let this like Spider. spider just a room yeah, with especially me. when you're living in basically a closet you know it's one thing if it's a giant area and you're like i'll leave it be and we'll probably never cross paths again but it's like nope i gotta do something about this Ever? and so he picked up a shoe and threw it at it. it turned out to be one of those deals where like it hit it and like just hundreds of baby spiders started ah, like just god damn yeah i fucking hate that image more he than continued anything. to live in the basement which fuck off that's yeah like See, I don't, I don't have that part of me where it's like, well, it's a, it's on the other end of my room, and I'm sure it'll be fine. Because every time I've ever done that, I woke up the next day with a new spider bite. So I have like a no fucking prisoners approach. If a fucking spider enters my room, it's the same thing. Like you get bit if you get like into their web and shit. The, my room is my web. Get the fuck out. You yeah. Know? I I do. We've talked about it before. I do my best to try to like get a cup or something and capture them and let them go outside. Because they, as much as I hate spiders, they are probably like the best insect for the the ecosystem. But uh, well, the everything about that's a-, a lie because one, they're not insects. <laughs> Two, they I'm a part of the ecosystem and they're bad for me. They're really bad. Well, for yeah, me. but I mean, you could very easily make the argument that the humans are the worst part of the ecosystem. So anything bad for us is well, probably good for the counter planet, counterpoint. But. Again, I'm a part of the ecosystem, and I'm great. <laughs> so riddle me that, Mister Scientist. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that's spiders. That's not what my topic is this so, week. Spider warning, twenty twenty. When are, yeah, who, who's going to bring that up at the presidential debates? That's what I want to know. Like, yeah. Well, how about we take Maybe a we'll real take threat the sp- seriously? The spider menace. That's, yeah. Yeah. Fucking cowards in Washington. Well, the re- reason they won't take it on is because they're all giant spiders in human suits, you know. Probably. It's, 
Yeah. It explains why so much shit has gone wrong. <laughs> That's what we should do is just go into a room of politicians and release a jar of flies and you'd watch the spiders start to like. And see, yeah, and see who gets others. a little hot yeah. under the collar. <laughs> oh man, these lights are pretty bright, aren't they, Obama? <laughs> You look like you're getting a little hungry there, Mitch. Mm. Oh, did you skip lunch? All right. So, <laughs> there's like, that's how you, like, a minor phobia for, that I had when I was a kid progresses. <laughs> so, like, like I'm, not, I'm knocking on the door of 30 now, and, like, I, I started as, you know, fucking kind of afraid of spiders to now convince they run the country. <laughs> In your sixties, the pizza delivery guy will come and knock on the door to drop off the pizza that you specifically ordered, and he'll be greeted by like being sprayed in the face with raid. You're like, no spiders, <laughs> unclean. Uh, no, I by sixty if I'm if I make it that long. Uh, the you know Vegas odds haven't been kind there, but they. Uh, <laughs> it, it, I would probably enact my like make everything uh, pneumatic tubes idea. So, like, from the end of my driveway, I'd be like, put the pizza in there and, you know, and I'll send the money out to you in the other tube. And the delivery guy will be like, that's awesome. And I'll be like, I know, get yeah. the fuck out of here. And then I'll watch just like the pizza, like the box just like rips open and it like just oh, it flies fuck. apart as it goes through the tube. But it wouldn't it work. It wouldn't work, but it would be so fucking cool. But I as wouldn't care. As long as it got it to you. Yeah. You, you can like scoop it out of the tube. Or just have the tube lead directly to your mouth. Yeah. I mean, and the great thing about that is, if spiders get in the tube, just reverse the air on that shit, blow those fuckers <laughs> out. My bubble, my bubble uh, mansion will be perfect. Yeah, no spiders in your whole area, but the town next to you will just be full of them. <laughs> just like. Anyway, I should probably uh, keep bullshitting while I pull my notes up here, but yeah, it doesn't matter. None of this matters. <laughs> we can... So yeah, I've got a got a story this week. Oh yeah, somehow. we do that. I guess that's yeah. the point of the show. It is. If you happen to be, this is your first show listening. You're like, what the hell did I <laughs> click on? These it's assholes not a spider... just checked out on the first we, episode. We only rant about spiders for the first 15 minutes of every show, but it's not. You know, that's that's not what we do. But. uh yeah, just random stories every week, sometimes fictional, sometimes real. Uh, this one's real. Uh, a lot of times we gravitate towards, like, <laughs> the murderers and serial killers and just we, horrible, horrible people. Yeah, there were a couple episodes back, we brought up Beyond Belief, and I'm really starting to think we should just steal that format and be like, well, it might be real, it might be fake, we'll let you know at the end. You know? <laughs> I, I've thought about doing that before, and the other thing that I kind of want to do, because I've talked about it, I, I used to do it in in school <laughs> is do like biographies of famous people but then add completely fake shit in there yeah. and just like see how believable it sounds you um, did have one I, you, don't, I don't remember what it was about but it was really early on when we started the show and you went through the whole story and then by like you know minute 50 you were like and that would be cool except none of this happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I forget what that was but uh but but that one I didn't make up. It was like a that was like the uh, yeah it was a, the urban legends yeah. like and then it's like oh by the way that's not. But that was what know. Beyond Belief was too. So. Oh, you know what? I think that was the uh, like the very it was the second episode because I was just looking at it today. It was the second half of. Uh, I shared the one that you did about Dancing Fever because that was a way less scary pandemic than than. Uh, so you what we're dealing with right now? Well, yeah, I guess. I don't know. At that's, least, like, you a... can trace coronavirus back to, like, the virus, you know? Like, there's no explanation for why just people just decided, like, I can't stop dancing. and then Literally until they died. Until like, it that. wasn't just like a, oh, ha, ha, this is a funny thing. Okay, we eventually grew tired of it and yeah. went home. But, uh, um, but anyway, the second half of that episode, and that was just episode two, was that one about Queen Ravalona or Ravalona or something. R- R- Ravioli. Yeah, of Madagascar and about like all this horrible shit that she did because she was this bloodthirsty person. And right. Turns right. out, 
Turns out it's not true. It's racism. <laughs> so <laughs> that's so, our, that's, that's our beyond yeah. belief, beyond instead of fact or fiction <laughs> as the subtitle, truth or racism. <laughs> Spoiler alert! It's pretty much always racism uh, every time. That's fucking hilarious. But, uh, yeah, that was episode two. Check that out if you if you are so inclined. Um. Anyway, but this one this one is not about killers and stuff. It's about science. And the and ultimate killer. My, really. So, Muz, Muzaffer, Muzaffer, I probably should have looked up how to say his name. Um, Sharif, I, I could say the last name, grew up in the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> he was the son of a wealthy family, and so he was able to earn an education and a number of degrees over there before moving to the United States to study psychology at Harvard uh, during the American Great Depression. So that's a great time to move from Europe to, to America. Like, I want a better life. Oh, the Great Depression, you say? Never <laughs> heard of it. Although, and imagine, we just were talking about racism. Imagine what he faced there, too. When you're a foreigner and you move to a country that currently, like, people are eating their shoes, but you come from a wealthy, like, Turkish family, and you're like, oh, everything's fine. I want education here. And everybody else is like, fuck you. Get out. Because I guarantee that's what he ran up against. I know. That was, that was great it was, Turkish guy voice. <laughs> it was kind of going towards Apu from The Simpsons. And then it was like, wait, this is super bad and then, for me and to then try you to realized do this. Apu's in trouble right now. So. And that I probably shouldn't try to copy that accent because that's, <laughs> I know, like that's you're, pretty offensive You're half too. in on it. And yeah. And I was like, oh, shit, what am I doing? Um, anyway, yeah. I'll, he came I'll change that to... bit of the show in editing to be Morgan <laughs> Freeman's just normal voice. <laughs> Oh, man, if we have that technology, just use it for the whole episode. Um, so he came here during the, the Great Depression. Uh, he got a degree from Harvard, and then he went back to Germany in the 1930s to study psychology, which just happened to be during the rise of the Nazi Party leading up to World War II. Um, so the, the part of me was reading this story, and I'm thinking he's causing all these horrible, horrible problems. Uh, is everywhere he goes, it's just like it's the worst time in history to be there. After he went to Germany, he came back to the United States where he initially re-enrolled at Harvard before transferring to Columbia University where he earned his doctorate. He took a position at... <laughs> and originally when I wrote my notes and when I was reading this, I said, oh, he took a position at Arkansas University. And then I got a little farther and said, in Turkey. I'm like, what? It's Ankara University. I just can't read. Arkansas University. <laughs> I know. I was like, that's a weird university. You go to like Harvard and uh, Columbia University, which maybe doesn't have the name recognition as Harvard, but for a scientific school, that's that's up there. And then be like, now I'm done. I'm going to go teach in Arkansas <laughs> University. It'd be, it'd be a weird career path. From but. the Ohio State University <laughs> in Baghdad. <laughs> yeah, right. So basically, he moved back to Turkey, the area where he was from. Um, there he formed ties with the Turkish Communist Party. He was outspoken against Nazis and Nazi supporters, but uh, growing political tensions led to a number of incidents at the university, including his arrest. Because apparently... One of the worst things you could do in Turkey at the time was say Nazis are bad. Well, I mean, it's the ongoing war against woke culture, you know? <laughs> right. All, all Starting this, way back in the like everybody, 30s and 40s. You know, because it was, you know, saying I hate Nazis is just virtue signaling, as we all know. Well, and hating Nazis is just as bad as Nazis hating Jews, right? I mean, yeah, because it's just hate, you know? <laughs> and at the end of the day, we're all just dust in the wind. So really, right. you're evil right. too. Good things and, and bad if things think are about the almost same. More see. evil, right? But uh, so anyway, he he ended up getting arrested and detained by the government for whatever reason, political stuff. Uh, I imagine it actually was less about like Nazism specifically and more about the communist uh, part. Yeah. Um, so when he he was released, he decided to go back to the United States because he was, you know, <laughs> worried about staying in Turkey. Probably a good move. Although, uh, moving back to the U.S. wasn't really that much of a step up, given his beliefs. Um, Turkey revoked his citizenship due to his political views, um, 
which I put that in quotes because it's weird that like his political views were that he was anti-fascist and anti-racist and that those really aren't political views <laughs> in my opinion <laughs> that's uh, just like how to I, be but I uh, mean you should be right but unfortunately you're not as proof by where we are now where right. it's like those are somehow very political and like partisan issues <laughs> you, you shouldn't hate people based on the color of their skin. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, that, that's one on. side. That's Does, one opinion. I'm not saying we need to hate them. I'm saying you should love me more. <laughs> so anyway, his Turkish citizenship got uh, revoked, but he was afraid to seek U.S. citizenship because he found himself back in the United States just in time for the McCarthy era. Right. Yeah, um, I was going to say, like, <laughs> you're not going to find many uh, friends over here. No, no. Uh, so, of course, during the time he was interrogated a number of times by the FBI due to his ties with the uh, Communist Party in, in Turkey, and which just kind of served to make him less and less outspoken about his views because he really wasn't a political guy. He was a scientist, but, uh, was <laughs> you know, you have these guy. views. And, and and you'd like to think that you could share those views, and then you keep getting arrested and threatened to be, <laughs> like, killed, basically, and you're like, well, maybe I'll keep this controversial view to not hate other people to myself. Uh, he'd go on to hold positions at Yale, the University of Oklahoma, and Penn State, and he was seen as a leader in the field of psychology and social psychology. Um, unsurprisingly, Dr. Sharif struggled with mental illness himself, which many attribute to the years of persecution in Turkey and the constant government surveillance and the paranoia that that causes when he moved back to the United States. Uh, his manic depression grew worse after the death of his wife in 1982, so he lived a pretty long time. Uh, but he'd end up dying of a heart attack in 1988. So if I hadn't breezed through his biography so quickly, his life in and of itself would probably make for a pretty interesting episode. Yeah. Uh, there's, just, there's a lot of, you know, political backgrounds there and and just the things that he dealt with, like I said, from the Great Depression to Nazis to McCarthyism. Um, and overcoming all that and becoming a leader in his <clears throat> field, that's pretty impressive. But that's not really why I picked him out to talk about, because that doesn't sound like a non-essential podcast type thing. Uh, a that's doctor what, overcomes. Yeah. <laughs> right. What would become known as uh, the robber's cave experiment is, is really what caught my eye. Um, is what Dr. Sharif was most famous for. Um he decided that he wanted to test some of his theories about social psychology, uh, but running these tests in the lab on lab rats just wasn't really going to be good enough. As bad as the timing of a lot of his life events seemed to have been, his uh, social experiments probably couldn't have happened at a better time. Uh, so when you're talking about social psychology, they're talking about things like groupthink and like why people interact with other people in the way they do. Not just like psychology in general, but like specifically humans interacting with other humans. Well, after World War II, there was a growing scientific interest in this as people were trying to kind of make sense of how civilization had just come to, like, pull off the kind of atrocities that they yeah. just witnessed. Like how you know, good, so they, like, people disassociate from each other so much. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, and we still talk about it to this day. I mean, there's, there's famous experiments that happened in this time of, of Sharif's life that, that I'm talking about where they do the experiments. Uh, the famous one where where they put uh, a test subject in a room and they think that they're shocking another test subject at the command of whoever's running the test. Mm -hmm. And they run it up to see how high they go. And it's to the point where the people are like screaming in pain. Now, it's all fake. They're not actually shocking anybody. Yeah. But uh, it's because you, you get that. You know, a lot of people I would have never followed, you know. Hitler's commands. It's like, well, I hope not, but but it's very easy. Psychology to, says you probably would have. Yeah. It's very easy <laughs> to just like you know, like people want to operate under an authority to an extent, and because it <laughs> it makes things so much simpler in our day to day right. lives. Like how much shit, just like not even like directly <laughs> harmful shit, but stuff you know is bad, but you like you know you go to work or you go out and you do the same things that you know, like, looking at them objectively are bad ideas, but that's just how your world operates. 
you know? Yeah, and there's a lot of reasons that go into it, like fear of looking stupid. Like maybe they know something you don't or right. fear of repercussion for yourself or or a lot of things. And that's what they were studying. And it's a good field to study because if you're any kind of intellectual at all, you realize that we got to pay attention to this stuff because by knowing about it, that's what helps us avoid doing it again. Although we're currently doing it again, so apparently <laughs> so, nobody's yeah. fucking well, paying attention. That's right. at least the theory. Um, <laughs> we're trying, but so Sharif de- had developed a theory that he called realistic conflict theory, which is a great name. It's a good which, band. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have like a, a much time to like really dig into the full theory. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to sit here and like read through stacks of scientific papers because. Yeah. That's not what we are here. <clears throat> but the most basic way to explain his theory was that um, internal conflict, prejudices, and stereotypes, so basically things like racism, sexism, and just like class differences in warfare, um, how they were affected when it came to these same groups competing for limited resources. Uh, so basically, what say would say was that you could have competing groups and they would develop these conflicts between each other but then if something came along that they was so bad that they all needed to overcome that they could unite together to to do that um and we heard a lot of that after 9-11 how everybody's like oh look how that united us all together and it's like yeah superficially for like four years while we took it out on a country that didn't even do it but that's not the point (laughs) uh but that's the kind of thing he was looking into um He had first tried to test his theory at Camp Middle Grove in New York. He posited that he could break up the group of 11-year-old boys by pitting the campers against each other for prizes and such. Uh, Basically, you'd say, okay, we're going to play a a game of of tug-of-war, and whoever wins, you know, you get dessert tonight, and the other group doesn't. Things that would matter to kids, but not like, we're going to beat you with sticks. Right, right. Um, Kind of playful consequences. Well, kind of playful, but enough kind to what his, what his his desire was, was to then get enough competition between the groups that the two groups would hate each other. And, you know, you could have a measurable conflict where, you know, you're you're from, you know, the blue camp and we're from the orange camp and the blue camp people are all stupid or whatever. Yeah. Sorry, I just he, took a side there. Didn't mean to. Yeah. <laughs> and then his plan was once he created enough conflict where, you know, the two... Two sides really did detest each other. Then he would introduce an external threat, for instance, a forest fire, and watch as the group put aside their differences to work together. Unfortunately, that for sure, really if, bad. that's a really <laughs> bad idea. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, his his uh, experiment didn't work. Uh, don't worry, the boys didn't turn to enemies and kill each other or anything, and nor did they burn alive and then intentionally set fire. Instead, what happened is they failed to become enemies in the first place. So oh. even when, like, Sheriff's staffers went in, it went so far as to, like, destroy some of the campers, like, tents and then blame it on the other campers, like, the kids were generally able to, like, come Sniffer. to a, like, yeah. They'd be like, hey, why'd you do that? Be like, oh, we didn't. And they're like, okay, whatever. We're oh, still they're, friends. They're fucking with us. <laughs> God damn, these kids are so much smarter than, like, we are now. <laughs> Like, we can't even look at the people above us in society and be like, they're fucking with us. I don't know. It never necessarily said that they figured out that the that they were into it. And we'll get a little bit more into that in the actual, the, the robber's cave experiment. But it didn't form, like, these deep hatreds. They were just, you know, they were kids. And you know how kids are. They, they get into fights, and then four minutes later, they're best friends again. And apparently, he did not know that, and which he could not overcome to, that. Which means we have to take something from them that they really love. <laughs> your dog whichever team loses their dog's gonna get killed right in front of them and then the other team will eat it for dinner um, which probably would have worked pretty well but that's uh might have been crossing a line hmm. uh, you uh, know we were fact, still this, figuring out ethics back then they were and that was the other thing i was going to put but i couldn't really word it real well when I said that uh, this was actually good timing for him and for his experiments because of World War II, and this is something that was being focused on. The other thing that made it a prime time for that is it wasn't late enough in psychology history to where they were like, hey, wait, we should probably be ethical right. when we do stuff. <laughs> so it left him a lot more wiggle room than he would have today, for instance. Um, but the experiment went so poorly 
uh, at least as poorly as, in as far as confirming his theory, that one night he got blitzed and started a fist fight with his assistants. Um, they were probably disagreeing about <laughs> how the things were going. But I love the idea of that, like a psychologist being bested by kids so he just gets drunk and starts a fight. Like, I I kind of wonder if he studied his behavior the next day. <laughs> So the robber's cave experiment was his second attempt at this. Uh, This time he'd take a group of 22 12-year-old boys to robber's cave. It was a campsite in Oklahoma, uh, where he'd leave them virtually unsupervised, at least as far as the kids knew. So there wouldn't be like... We had a sniper on the other mountain (laughs) instead. Well, it's interesting when you picture the idea, because that definitely wouldn't fucking fly today, but it's like, oh, we're going to have a bunch of campers. No counselors, though. You boys just camp in the woods and... You'll be good to go. Like, like the like I, the setup would be bad right away because it's just some dude like I need twenty two children to take out in the middle. And of no nowhere. adults. No and, no and adults. No, no you can't come. Adults. No. This is for science. Oh. Science. <laughs> you got to say it real creepily though. This is uh, for uh, my uh, research. Exactly. That's <laughs> now I'm a little concerned, but. Uh, this time he was smart enough to to initially split the group uh, the the larger group into two separate groups of like I assume equal eleven campers. Uh, one were called the Rattlers and one were called the Eagles because you know camps have always been corny as shit. Uh, but for the first few days, neither group knew the other even existed. It wasn't like the first day they were splitting you off into two groups. You go this way, you go that way. They didn't know that there was another group of campers at this campsite, and they kept them separate for two days. Uh, with the idea is that, that these groups would form, you know, internal bonds and friendships, and at le- or at least that's how they word it. But as the kid that went to camp, it's less that and more just a familiarity with the other campers. Like, yeah. But uh, anyway, so after the two days, the groups were introduced and they were pitted against each other in competitions. Which I like the word pitted because it makes it sound like fight to the death. <laughs> uh, but it was somebody just stuff. broke was- a stick and threw each side to each tribe mm-hmm. and. Like, all right, <laughs> go for, go get them. But uh, they were pitted against each other in things like baseball and tug of war, etc. And the same deal where the team that won would be rewarded, um, which was interesting to me. Like I said, I didn't have time to like really dig through like the papers. I'm sure they're still out there because it is still a, a fairly well referenced experiment. But it sounds like they wanted minimal like supervision. They wanted the kids to think or at least act like they were on their own. But obviously there had to be some adult interaction there to, like, provide food and whatever. Um, but it seems, like, extremely minimal. Uh, and then as the rivalry clearly started to form, because it did, you know, that it's just like you would if you had two two teams competing against each other. We've got... We could probably credit this experiment with, like, all of reality television today because it's basically what it is. Um so as they could tell that these these groups were starting to dislike each other, they were instigated further by Sharif and his assistants. Um, one group was given matches in order to burn the flag of another. Uh, to retaliate, that group broke into the cabins of their, their rivals and trashed them and stole their stuff. Um, assistants purposely made one of the groups late to lunch so that the other group would get there first and eat all the food, which is, that's a good way. If you want to get me... Like ready to actually beat somebody down, yeah. take my food away, and like I give wouldn't it to be mad else. at the tribe about that though. I'd be mad at the fucking place. Like, why don't you have enough food for everyone? Right, but if there's not like a bunch of adults around, it was probably more like, oh, if you guys come to here at lunchtime, there will be food, food laid out, and then right, whatever. I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying. Always details, assume but... that there's some fucking hidden evil authority right, pulling the strings all... of everything. We're all just puppets. Yeah. Um, he got what he wanted. Uh, what started as a sporting rivalry rivalry quickly turned to verbal insults and then physical altercations. Uh, at one point, the groups had become so violent that they had to be separated for two days. Um, so now he was ready for phase two of his experiment, which was taking away Nuclear all their bombs. water. Yeah, pretty much. Um, took away all their drinking water, and they're in the middle of these mountains in Oklahoma. All right, uh, they, yeah, that's they, just not... No, that's... <laughs> That's, that's just where evil. Was, well, yeah, right, because that's what I was getting at with the ethical part. That would not fly today. Um, it shouldn't have flown back yeah. then. Uh, they did each have, like, canteens, but that's all the water they had. 
And they were either told or just knew that the like source of the water was this big water tank that was like up on the mountain somewhere, but they didn't know where. Um, and the idea was once the water was taken away and they realized, oh shit, we need water to survive, that they would work together. And they did. So um, eventually, you know, I'm sure it was kind of not kosher at first, but by the time that they found this water tank, they basically had forgotten about all their prior rivalry uh, and they worked together. They had also not, not only like sent them on this hunt for this water tank on a mountain, but then they like buried the valve and big rocks. So they had to work together to clear it away. Like just to make sure that they're really working together. And I like that last step. Cause that could have easily backfired where once you find the water, one group takes the rocks right. and beats to death. The other kids. Well, I was going to say didn't. like, there's, you know, especially in the context of some like, you know, the Holocaust or world war two, like those are situations where, like you have two groups of people feeling uh like two groups of people and one is like going after a weaker group of people because they feel like they're being mistreated and they feel like that weaker group is responsible for it like the blame is being rejected so like how you set that up like oh you got to go get the water but if you have some like authority telling you that like Hey, that other group though is going to be the reason you don't get the water if you don't do something about them. You know, like then right. that that triggers you know and, a, the whole opposite reaction you would want. And that's why it's it's interesting that the experiment was performed with kids, which for some reasons I get, but for other reasons, like you'd get very different ex- results with adults. I guarantee. You. Yeah. And so if you're trying to prove human psychology, you kind of need both steps. But the adult one would be very dangerous because they could literally see adults murdering each other in the woods. I think so, when it comes to, like, tasks, like, I mean, this is still, you know, kind of an irresponsible thing to be doing. But, like, I do get the idea of, like, kids have a way of, like, simplifying tasks. So, like, they're not, you know, as burdened by, like, context and history when you tell them to do something, you know. Right. So, and we're a lot more like, well, the last time we tried to do something with this group of people, this, this, and this, and it didn't work and blah, blah, blah and stuff. And we're trying to like constantly, you know, create well, many, many, many conflicts in our bigger problems. And a yeah, kid will be more other... like, well, let's just go get the fucking water and we'll deal with the rest right. of it. And of course, the other difference, too, is that your kids are dealing with this rivalry that was created over maybe a week's time. It's a short lived, like superficial rivalry, no matter how like he did it got. Right. Whereas adults are blaming groups of people that their whole lives they've been taught to blame and just like. Right. And it's ingrained over this, just, you know, right. generations on generations. But. So, of course, there was a litany of problems with the experiments. Um, from the outside interference of Sharif and his assistants uh, to the fact that just the way the whole ser- experiment was set up just allowed way too much um, possibility for it, the outcome to have been controlled by like what the outcome he was looking for. Uh, it's called yeah. confirmation bias. Uh, so we threw in a the- wild card to poison the water <laughs> and blame the other group. And yeah, as the kids started dying, then see how they react. <laughs> Um, and then, of course, the the last problem is what we just talked about, the fact that it was extremely unethical to conduct these kind of experiments on humans, let alone 12-year-old kids. Right. But at the time, uh, his theory and the test, which he said helped confirm it, because technically the results did confirm what he said he was looking for, um, <laughs> that was enough uh, to keep him fairly well regarded. And like I say, he he went on, he had a long successful career in psychology. And I don't necessarily think his theory in and of itself was wrong or bad. I just think the test was, it well, didn't too, really test. Yeah. 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 It was like very guided to an outcome. And, and the other thing is, I, I'm not sure like how strong of a statement, like he was trying to prove with this, like, Oh, people, even if they don't like each other, will work together if they're both going to die. It's like, well, yeah, no shit. That's, That's what I say. Like there's a good message to it, but it's not a, uh, it's not a legit experiment in that. And there's so many uh, historical examples of it not working out that way. 
even when like you know two groups are in like dire situations like sometimes they don't fucking come together no yeah work. that's the thing too I'd, I'd be interested if you ran this experiment which you should not do because again not not good but we if you should. ran it like 30 times would you get the exact same result 30 times or would like half the time one group of kids because I could certainly see one group tricking another group being like, oh, we're, we're, the water's over that way because they want it all to themselves. Or, or like I mean, you said, like as they get older, like if you do different age groups, like would that affect right, it? Right. Like would they become a little more fucking pieces of shit? I guarantee you they would. Uh, but so, but regardless of how good of an experiment it actually was, it would become the basis for the novel that most of us know and either love or hate from our grade school days, Lord of the Flies. Never read Which, it, actually. Really? Yeah. I I didn't hate it, but I also haven't read it since high school. And that's what my... Like I said, this is a short... This is the end of my notes here, so I don't have a whole lot more to add. But uh, I probably, when they said, oh, well, that's what Lord of the Flies is based on, I should probably give it a reread, because from what I remember of the book, it did not go like this theory at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's It went a lot more like what we're saying that we think it would probably go, especially with a little bit older kids or adults. Um, which makes it a much more interesting book, <laughs> but um, but I just say saw the experiment and, and saw that it was like oh it's like kind of Lord of the Flies in and it's like yeah that's actually exactly where the book came from. Hmm. Um, so I liked it and I, I I I did like the I was glad when I got into the the story of Sherry's life that that was also interesting because yeah. the experiment itself was interesting but it's short and well, it's I, one of those I, we've talked talked about before my wife all the time Tara she. Just say, oh, you should do more shows on like science stuff. And it's like that's really hard because a lot of times you I'm can not... say it in like three minutes. Like, yeah. like oh, they wanted to test whether rats could swim, and they can. Yeah. See you yeah. next week. You know. And also, I'm just not a very smart person, so I'd just be like, hey, did you know there's a star that's actually shaped like a dildo? And, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> See you next week. You know, that we can't. That can't be the show. Um, but I do find like psycho psychology experiments interesting. <laughs> Even ones like this, where it's like, well, you know, like that's this the one. Terrible, or- terrible thing is all these experiments from like the forties through the almost really the eighties. Uh, before they really were like, hey, 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 this stuff you really can't fuck around with. We got to be ethical. Yeah. Like it was super wrong to do, but it was also very helpful for science and very interesting to go back and look at. Yeah, because it. It, it is so you. If you were a psychotic person, you could very easily make the. It, it's a true statement that it's a lot easier to do this science and not worry about the ethics of what you're doing to your test subjects. Yeah. But, but. Uh, yeah. Well, like that experiment where, like, uh, you know, he he had the people like you know pretending to shock the patient or whatever. Um, like those those people who took part in it. Like, when they found out, like, what it all was and stuff, like, they were fucking horrified and really fucking mad at the yeah. dude because it's like, you know, you manipulated me into, like, doing, like, a horrible thing or think I was doing a horrible thing. And now and I feel like people, a piece of shit. Yeah, that's yeah. the problem. It's like, you'd say, oh, well, but once you tell them they didn't actually hurt anybody, it'll be okay. It's like, no, because now the rest of their lives are going to be, like feeling like, am I a horrible person because I did this? And like I said, the scientific way to look at that would be easy to say, no, now like, you understand what can happen, but that doesn't change how you're going to feel about yourself. That's the thing. Like there wasn't, uh, there really wasn't enough of, uh, I mean, you shouldn't do the experiment anyway, honestly. Um, but because they did it, like he didn't really, he initiated that to get that outcome, like to get the data, but he didn't do it with kind of the emotional presence to be like, okay, these people are going to need to like have it explained to them that this is not, you know, an experiment to expose some like dark, you know, character, personal yeah, characteristic. Well, like this isn't proving that you specifically are a bad person. It's to show, you know, that you, human you'll nature, work, like, yeah, this is a, like yeah, how, yeah. how easy it is for, you know, as far as we know, just regular good people to do bad things. If an authority, you know, tells them that's what we need to do, you know? Right. And like I said, that's an important thing to know because a lot of times 
there's these thing. It's just the same way with trying to recognize. You know, we started the show kind of talking about and joking about racism and stuff. But that's why it's important to recognize that. So even if you feel like, oh, yeah, I'm not a racist person, to pay attention because if you're not paying attention to that stuff, you're you're. It's, it's like I say, you're doomed to repeat it. Like yeah, um, you, like we live in a, we operate in a society that works under this system that you can't really afford to go on autopilot in. Right. Because I, I, would, that, I would wager that if you talked about this experiment to an average person and then said, oh, you know, could the Nazi thing happen again today? Although, we, like we say, you yeah, the argument yeah. it is happening today. They'd say, no, we're more evolved from that now. Yeah. Say, no, we're not, because it's built into us. And unless you're actively fighting it, it's there. Yeah. Like but, you uh, always have to have a presence of mind to combat like your, you know, our collective worst nature. Like, even if, like, individually, like, you know, it's, you know, like, no, I I don't want to, you know, completely shit on, like, my grandparents, but, you know, my grandparents are, like, those, like, cliche grandparents are just, like, the warmest fucking people you'll ever meet, you know, like, yeah, I mean, they're really old now, so they mostly just want to sleep, but, uh, like, you know, back, back in the day, they were the type of people, you show up, they want to cook for you, they want to do this, and blah, 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 and make you feel real welcome and shit. And then, like, but because they, like, switch that part of their brain off, you'll just hear them, like, casually say shit that's just fucking awful. And, like, right. and and you have to, like, explain to them, like, you know, that's that's not okay, and you can't fucking think that way about people anymore, and it's not true well, and, yeah and and even then i, I love it because i know exactly what you mean but it's like you can't think that way anymore not that it was okay to think that way before but like now but it was societally you, just okay like it was acceptable. well yeah again now we understand more of what we were doing yeah um but yeah and if you don't pay attention and don't grow from it then you're just as bad as you were to begin with yeah but uh Says the guy that tried to do a horrible Middle Eastern accent. <laughs> right, right. You know, but that, I mean, that's also the thing. Like, that's, you know, and I'm, you know, guilty of similar shit. But it's like, you know, and, and it's not like, it's not saying you constantly have to walk around and be on your toes about every fucking joke you make. It's okay to fuck up and be sorry about it and, and stuff. But it is that thing, like, you have to have the self-awareness to be sorry about it you know you have to it has to come yeah, well, from genuine like introspection to be like oh wait like that's not okay and that's not a way yeah, to and operate it, and, and then this would be psychology too but uh, the, unfortunately and it's and I think we all have this instinct and it's the one that wins out way too often is where because nobody's perfect and you say or do something that you shouldn't have and you could either be like I'm sorry and you learn from it or you can double down because you're Defense, you get defensive yeah. about it, and and that's what yeah. happens way too often. But yeah, but that is an interesting uh, aspect of like those types of experiments because, like you said, like that you know they are unethical. We would never, we should never let them happen now. But also, we learned a lot from them. Yeah, from a scientific experience, like, from a purely scientific side, it's good that they happened, <laughs> right? But, uh, you know, because you know, we should know how easy it is for, you know, like regular people to do horrible things, and you know, yeah, it, it's. I always find that shit interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's. I don't know why I've never really like specifically Googled for this show, like horrifying psychology experiments, but that'll be something I will do in the future <laughs> at some Horrifying. point. Yeah, because I know there's more of them. Yeah, yeah, now that you've brought this to my attention, there's a couple I learned about in college that I, I genuinely think will be good topics for the show. And the the two that I know are the two most famous ones: the shock test one we talked about, and then there was another one, and I want to say it was at. Yale, maybe one of the Ivy League schools where mm -hmm. they had a group of students basically act as prison guards and a group of students act as prisoners. Yeah. And like how they started actually abusing the prisoner students, even though they all knew it was an experiment, but like just being put in that power dynamic. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and that's yet another thing. Like these were regular people and you just like you introduced a dynamic that was like you cannot become 
like a safe scenario for people. It, it, like it's by the very nature of having like people in power and people beneath you and the people in power trying to keep the people beneath them under control. Like you create a fucking violent, chaotic, goddamn mess. Right. Um, again, not a very, you know, smart thing to actually <laughs> to do to actual people. But we learned. Yeah, a lot. that's that's another one that's cited in two things. It's cited in in what it means about human psychology, and it's also one that's cited as one of the worst, like, <laughs> yeah, unethical experiments ever done. Um, <laughs> so yeah, whatever. But uh, yeah, that that might be some ripe uh, material yeah. for the future. Yeah, and, and Lord knows we need it. You know, we're getting closer to uh, episode one hundred, and yeah, we're inching inching that way. It kind of. It, it didn't really hit me until last week when I was saving the file and it was episode 80. It's like, holy crap. Yeah, so. And then the other thing that blows my mind is like I said, I was talking about uh, on Twitter today because I never, I really, we we both aren't like the most outspoken about the show, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, I usually mention it once or twice a week, a, a new episode and it's like as that, but with all this uh, uh, coronavirus, whatever, going, going around and all the talk about don't touch your face and wash your hands and then wash your hands again and then stick them in a thing of pure alcohol yeah. then wash boil, them a third boil time. Boil your hands. You know. uh, um, and I'm not diminishing that. It is, it, it, it's a Yeah, wash, wash but, your uh, fucking hands, but, you know, it's funny. But uh, it, that initially reminded me of the um, uh, guy, and I can't, it's like, e. I, I tweeted it this morning. It's a weird name. It's hard to say even if I have it spelled out in front of me. Um, but the doctor that basically literally like medically invented hand washing. Obviously, oh, people yeah. always wash their hands, but like doctors didn't used to think it was important from a medical side of things. And then he f- figured out, hey, this is how we're transmitting infections and all the and the the best part was all he was saying is, hey, like after we stick our heads and hands in a dead person that died of a disease, we should probably wash them before delivering a baby. And the we medical shouldn't. profession fucking drummed him out. They're like, yeah. you're fucking stupid. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm eating with my infected hands right now. Fuck off. dude. <laughs> and so that brought that to mind. And then it brought the, the dancing fever. But anyway, my whole point with that is, yeah, you, you just talked about how close we're getting to episode 100. I went back looking for those episodes, and holy shit, those were a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the we, Dancing uh, Fever one I knew was, because I knew that was one of the first episodes we did. But uh, even the, the hand-washing one, that was... It, it's super was hard like, to find, like, we, maybe that's our fault. Maybe, but, like, once I send you the file to go up, I'm just like, okay, it's done. But maybe <laughs> we should have these more organized than they are. I don't know. Well, I cheat. I've got access to the like back end of the system, so I can go in and just like search for key phrases like yeah. dancing, and it'll pull up the the thing. But uh, yeah, I don't know. But, anyway. but I always title them so like the raw file name is never anything that's like easily findable. I just take something that's I, funny from the fucking episode and go with that. And then I leave it that when I um, upload stuff. And thinking it doesn't matter. And then I was like, well, depending on how you view our podcast, you can see that file name. So, yeah. <laughs> but, it, but I like it. Keeps yeah. you on your toes. Yeah. And and I'm busy. Once the show's edited, I'm I'm done. I'm, I got to get back to my fast and furious lifestyle, um, uh-huh. which is what we're about to do now because the show is over. It's all right. 50 minutes. We haven't done that in forever. and. I know, considering I had a super short topic, we kind of yeah. went off the rails there. I well, think. that's well, spiders. Once again, rails. it's the fucking spider's fault. It is. Another thing. They fucked up. They ruined the show. Um, Warps is staring at me as we speak. <laughs> Bastard. So, yeah. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, we will be back to conduct more experiments on Irresponsibly in the Woods next week. <laughs> See you.